She is running a series on virtuous women. As I said, it is Women's Month in South Africa, and we are celebrating the Hepsibas, the Daughters of God. Last week, she began and said to us, stop crying for the dead situations in your lives. Sister Matole, my queen, this is your time. Speak to us. Thank you so much. Good morning, good morning, my sister, and good morning to all of us um, who have joined us on the special program this morning. Um, we pray that the Lord will be with us this morning as we share together on his word. Um, the title of our message this morning um, will be informed by a scripture reading coming from the book of 1 Samuel 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2, and we read two verses, verses 1 and this eight. And the, it reads as follows. And Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoiceth in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. Verse eight, he raises up the poor out of the dust and fills up the beggar from the dunghill, or he lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them amongst princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and his, he has set the world upon them. Can we pray? Our well, Father and our God, we bow down to you, ask that Lord, you take over your word, you who authored it from the beginning, we ask that you infuse it life. You infuse life, Lord, into our individual situations. That, Lord, we may arise as women strengthened and set on a high hill by you. This is our prayer and trust, Jesus, trusting and believing that it's done because you are faithful and you are true. Amen. Um, the text um, informs the title of our message this morning to the virtuous women. The title says, In my low points, O Lord, be my highest points. In my lowest points, O Lord, be my highest point. Now, as we read this text, we find this woman that we, many of us have read about and have meditated about, which is the lady called Hannah. This amazing woman finds herself praying and rejoicing in the temple in the text that we read together. Rejoicing that her horn is exalted, declaring that the Lord is her strength, he's her salvation. The one who enlarged her territory, the one who delivered victory to her. But you know, in Hannah's life, it was not always like this. She lived for many years as the wife of Alkana. One of two wives, the other wife's name, as we know, was Penina, and this woman was blessed with children. But Hannah herself found herself barren. She, she was unable to bear children. Her physical condition of barrenness brought with it a form of emotional barrenness. Her waking reality, when she woke up every morning, her reality was that feeling of being incomplete, inadequate. That feeling of saying that I'm not good enough. She consistently battled emptiness, a deep sense of personal failure, a sense of social awkwardness, public embarrassment and loneliness because she always thought she had this thing that she's lacking. Now, whilst Hannah was a devout woman and her family worshiped the one true God, she also battled many lows because the Lord had shut her womb. As a young bride, I, I can imagine that she prayed, she prayed and she prayed for a child. Her, her family probably sat together and prayed. Her friends prayed. The old woman in her community, the prayer circles got together and they prayed for her. And yet there was no child in sight. As she watched her peers deliver baby after baby, 
There was nothing coming her way. Maybe at some point she suspected that Alcana may be the reason. Maybe he's the one with the physical limitations. But when his second wife started bearing children, Hannah must have been completely devastated. You see, she was a woman with a sorrowful spirit. Yet what I love about her, and as we meditate together, as we go into prayer, we might, let, let, us, let us look at this woman and be encouraged that she was not a woman who resigned herself to living in that place of an emotional black hole, that spiritual desert. She decided that this is not where I'm going to stay. And may we today pray for ourselves if we find ourselves there and stand in the gap for other women and, and, and say, Lord, may you please deliver from this emotional shackles. She, you know, she did not give up hope in the Lord. She did not stop coming. You know, she reminds me of the faith, the faith of that Canaanite woman that we find in the book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 to 18, who, when, when this woman had this daughter who was possessed by a demon. And she came to Jesus the first time it says, and when she came, Jesus did not even answer a word. Can you imagine just coming in and praying? And maybe there's somebody here who has been praying and, and it feels like there is not a word. The encouragement this morning is that let us be like Hannah, let us be like this Canaanite woman who does not leave when it feels as though there is not a word for us. You know, this woman, kind of night woman, it says the second time when she comes, the disciples, the disciples even ask Jesus and say, send her away. Because she was crying after them, she would not stop. And even after, you know, many discouraging words are spoken, and it seems as though maybe there's discouragement that's coming through from Jesus. Whilst it is not, she keeps coming by faith. And Jesus then said to her, oh, woman, your faith, your faith. And then Jesus, seeing her faith, speaks healing into the life of this, this, this daughter's um, daughter, in, in the life of, of her daughter. So may, may it be that this morning, life will be spoken into somebody's life. Life will be spoken into the life of someone's daughter, someone's son, someone's marriage, someone's workplace, someone's um, in every need. You know? When, 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 and it's as if Hannah's situation was not bad enough. In her own things, her enemies made it their personal mission to make sure she does not forget her limitations and lack. With sharp words, with sarcasm, you know, you know, you know, she found herself bullied and provoked to tears by Penina. You know, even as she was going, they were going in as a family to, to the temple, even on their, on their way as they are preparing, these words would not stop. Do, do you, have, have you ever felt like even as you're professing to be a believer that there are just these people, there are just these words that just keep coming back at you. They keep saying that, you know, you're not good enough. Who do you think you are? You are no better than everybody else. And, and so you come always with this heavy heart. That was the state of Hannah. Maybe there's someone out there who can relate to the state that Hannah was in. Somebody who's in anguish because of a very public lack, a very public failure or challenge, subject to people whispering behind your back, gloating over the situation in your home, the situation in your family, or the situation over your friend, and, and maybe there's some people who are looking at the misery and saying, you know what, it serves them right. Maybe there's someone today, this morning, who has served, who has worked, who had sowed seed, but still there is no visible fruit in the tree. Today, the message is for the, that person who may be feeling hard pressed, perplexed, persecuted and struck down. And, and the message from the, the Apostle Paul that we get in the book of 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8 to 12 says, indeed, we, we may find ourselves hard pressed on every side, but we must know that we are not crushed. We are not crushed because of the one who is for us. Yes, we may be perplexed, but we must never despair because there is living hope in Christ, persecuted, May, may you know that you are not abundant. 
Yes, you may be struck down, but we, you know, we may be struck down, but we are not destroyed. Yet we will rise. I love the song by this lady called Yolanda Adams, called Yet Still Arise. She said, shattered, but I'm not broken. Wounded, but time will heal. Heavy the load, the cross I bear. Lonely the road I trod, shaken, but here I stand. Weary still I press on, yet still I rise high above the cloud. You see, in her lowest point, in bitterness of soul, Hannah rose up high above the dark clouds around her. And she prayed to her God. She fell before her Lord and wept her heart out. She cried out so hard to the point that any who was sitting at the doorpost to the temple thought she was drunk. You see, at her low point, she had no sophistication left. She had no decorum to observe, no image to protect. She spared no thought to what others would say, but she let it all out and poured out the abundance of her complaints. You see, it is okay for us to open up and say, Lord, these are my complaints. Other people call them issues, but Lord, in my heart, I have complaints. The Bible says she poured out the abundance of her complaints. She had a lot bottled in. She poured out her grief before her God. She moved, what I love is that Hannah moved from mourning at her condition to mourning to the Lord about it. Our message this morning is that though you feel weary, though you may feel wounded or just tired of fighting, don't give up. You know, the, test, some, the psalmist testified and said, the Lord is a shield for me. The Lord is my glory and the lifter of my head. He rises up those who are bowed down. So may we today, as we intercede and stand in the gap for all the people, all the women out there who may be bowed down, it is my prayer that the Lord may lift them up. The Lord who is raised up and seated on high, may he pull them out of that miry clay. May, may, he, may he go and, and reach out to these people, any person who may feel that they are swimming and they are drowning. And it feels that the river is about to overflow you. The river of emotion is about to overflow you. May the Lord today just lift us up. May the Lord lift you up. You see, it was in Hannah's persistence in prayer that her trial was transformed into a testimony. At times, it is in our lowest points that the opportunities are seated. It is often the trials and the obstacles that are our greatest teachers. You see, a refiner's fire does to gold what no other element can achieve. Cutting and friction do to diamonds what very few elements can reveal. I pray this morning that, you know, in our lowest points, oh Lord, may we find our divine purpose in you. In our lowest points, Lord, may you lift us up. That is my prayer. That the Lord may allow us to mount up on wings like eagles above the clouds. That in our individual low points, that the Lord may indeed be our highest point. You see, there are many women today who to the world may seem like they have it together. They are all sorted out. But there is still this one thing that you're battling with. You know? If you look at Hannah, she had a man who unreservedly loved her. A, a husband who provided a double portion for her. She was wealthily and generously taken care of. But even that which she let, it says her hubby, her friend, Elkanah, tried to make up for better, you know, as, as though it, she had 10 sons. And yet there was this one thing that seems, and that seemed to eclipse it all, to cover it all. I'm not sure if there's anyone on this call this morning who can relate. When you find yourself at that low point, when you feel like, as I said, you know, you are hitting an emotional and a spiritual rock bottom. Today we pray and say, Lord, you who are our high tower, the same God who had the earnest prayer of Hannah, 
May you be merciful to your people who are kind to you from a, from a sincere heart. I pray that, Lord, may, may you be a high point. May, may you stretch out your righteous hand to liberate us, to heal us, to pull us out of the rivers that seek to overflow. You know, after Habakkuk had experienced a time of barrenness, when the fig tree had failed to blossom, when there was no fruit in the vine, when the, the ship pens were empty, he, he still stood on the promises of God in Habakkuk 3 verse 19 when he said, the Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like a deer's feet and he will make me walk in my high places. You see, despite what may be happening or not happening around us, God has ordained high heels for each of us. He had a special high heel for Hannah. Her high heel was going to be the mother of the last judge of Israel, the mother of the anointer of kings. God's high heel for Hannah was that she was going to be the mother of the first of the major prophets after Moses. That was the Lord's high heel for her. The Lord had ordained a rejoicing for her. And, and, and so I, I pray that we may also arrive at the high heels that God has for each of us. You see, God has a place and a time unique and tailor-made to our individual needs and circumstances so that we may experience his individual blessings that he, 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 he ordained for us from the foundations of the world. Before we were born, he had these plans for us. You know, he, he says to, through the prophet Jeremiah, for I know the thoughts that I have for you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a hope, to give you a future, to give you a hope. I pray that the Lord may this morning lift us and take us to that place, that high place that he has ordained for us, to help us walk with the assurance that, that the work of Christ is finished. What God has for us was, was already sealed when Christ says it is finished on the cross. He's saying the work of salvation, the work of deliverance, the purpose that I have for God's people, the Lord says, the purpose that I have for my people, it is done. It is finished on the cross. May we have the peace in the person and the finished work of Calvary. Comfort in the fact that we can enter into his presence because of that finished work at Calvary. We, we can walk and, and, and go into prayer with, with the knowledge that the way to the accessibility of the throne has, has been opened for us. In the blessed call, hope that the God who's seated on the throne hears us this morning and have peace in the knowledge that we are never alone and that he's our refuge, he's our strength, and he's our ever-present help in trouble. Women of God, men of God, be comforted. In your lowest point, lift your hand up high and call upon the name of the Lord. And may he be your highest point still. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Can we close our eyes and pray? Lord Jesus, Father, we are all, Lord, bowed down in spirit before you. Many of us are bowed down, Lord, like Hannah. You know, Lord, the things that, that, that are in us, the things that outside of human view, we are grappling with. Things in our own private lives, things in our families, things in our relationships, things in our society, things in our communities, you know. I ask that, Lord, the one who saw Hannah see us this morning. And having seen us, I ask that you give us the breakthrough that you gave to her. In our individual situations, may today be a day of refreshing. May today be a day of healing. Today be a day of revival. In Christ Jesus, I pray that you awaken the dead situations. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen.